very big crowd. Wow, look at this. Hello, North Carolina. Hello. Two days from now, we are going to win this great state, just like we did last time. That was a big, uh, you were the one, right? You were the one that put us over that hump. And we're going to win four more years in the White House, our beautiful White House. With your vote, we will continue to cut your taxes, cut regulations, support our great police, protect our Second Amendment, defend religious liberty, and ensure more products are stamped with that beautiful phrase, made in the USA. And next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. Under my leadership, our economy grew at the fastest rate ever recorded, 33.1 percent just announced. We created a record 11.4 million jobs in the last five months. While foreign nations are in a free fall, we're creating the world's greatest economic powerhouse. A recent Gallup poll just came out found that 56 percent of Americans say they are better off today than they were four years ago under Obama and sleepy Joe Biden. And I want to tell you, it's really windy up here. <laughs> oh, thank goodness you have a president that doesn't need teleprompters, because these things are virtually useless. They are blowing all over the place. That's true. They're blowing all over. We had to, you know, we started off today two great places. We went to Iowa. We went, I tell you what, we had in Iowa, we had the coldest, windiest, but it was warm because the people were warm and we're going to win Iowa very big. Very big. But we had a couple of cold stops today. One was so cold, we talked about refugees. We said, if they come in, they're going to say, I want to go back immediately. It was so far. If Biden and Harris get in, the economy will collapse, and our country will go into at least a free fall, but probably a depression. They want to raise your taxes. They want to take away your Second Amendment. They want to do lots of things that I don't think you can stand for. I don't think you can stand for. Fracking doesn't pertain so much to it. It does pertain in a different way to you than it would to Pennsylvania. They're taking away your fracking, but what they're really doing is your energy costs are going to go through the roof. That will be very bad for this incredible state. They want to massively increase regulations, send your jobs overseas, destroy the suburbs, well, we're keeping the suburbs. I got rid of the regulation that would have destroyed the suburbs. They will bring it back worse than ever before. Terminate religious liberty, eliminate school choice, outlaw private health care, and shred your Second Amendment, take away your guns, and indoctrinate your children with anti-American lies. Biden has vowed to abolish U.S. oil, U.S. fracking, natural gas, industry. Look at what he's talking about doing. But it's not him. He's shot, okay? It's not him. It's the radical left. It's the radical left. Energy prices will explode and crippling. That will cripple our country. You know, we right now, energy independent, what we have going, we've never had before. Biden's energy ban will send every state from North Carolina to Michigan to Pennsylvania into a very, very severe problem. And we're not going to have it. We worked too hard. We had the greatest economy in the history of our country. And then the plague came in from China. It came in from China. They should have never allowed it. They stopped it from going into China. But it came to us and Europe and the rest of the world. And we're never going to ever forget. We will never forget. But now we're building our economy back up, and it's going in a V, but it's really a super V. 
As long as I'm president, we will remain the number one producer of oil and natural gas on the planet Earth. And we will remain energy independent. Our opponent's agenda is a war on workers, a war on faith, and a war on our great police. Biden says he's running as a proud Democrat. I'm running as a proud American. Thank you. Thank you very much. By the way, I, I just have to say this. So we had something incredible happen four years ago. This is more important, and there's more energy. And the crowds are bigger. Everything's hotter. And it's really — but this is actually — and I never thought I'd say it because that was an incredible period of time. Never thought. This is the most important election, perhaps, in the history of our country. Get out and vote. Got to get out and vote. Sleepy Joe Biden is a diehard globalist who spent 47 years outsourcing your jobs, opening your borders, and sacrificing American blood and treasure in ridiculous, endless wars. And they're all coming back. They're all coming back. North Carolina lost nearly half of its manufacturing jobs thanks to NAFTA, one of the worst trade deals ever. And we got rid of it. Nobody thought that was possible. Promises made, promises kept. We did it all. <laughs> Biden and his group shipped your jobs and your factories to China and other places in faraway lands, raking in millions of dollars for himself, it turns out. We didn't know about this, did we? His son was like a human vacuum cleaner. He went in and where are you going today, Dad? I think I'll go to Ukraine. OK, let me pick up a couple of bucks, 183000 a month and $3, three million up front. Where are you going today, Dad? I'm going to go to Russia. Good. So the mayor of Moscow's wife gave him $3.5 million, right? And here's the scary part. The fake news media, and there's a lot of it right back there, the fake news. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. And big tech will refuse to put it on, and then they'll, they'll terminate the New York Post if they put it up. New York Post, I have to give them a lot of credit. Number one, they endorsed me, which is nice. You know, I got endorsed today by the Pittsburgh Gazette, and it hasn't happened where they, en they endorsed a Republican today. Can you Nobody could believe it. They haven't done it in decades. And thank you very much, Pittsburgh Gazette. Well, thank it. Well, we got endorsed by a lot of great people. We got endorsed by great people, and a lot of newspapers are endorsing us because they know that Joe Biden is not up to this job. All you have to do is watch him for about five minutes. He is not up to this job. One thing I can tell you, President Xi, Putin, Kim Jong-un, they're very sharp. They're very sharp. They're all very sharp. And we cannot have a leader that's not sharp. Joe Biden is a corrupt politician who is bought and paid for by China and other countries. How can you have a guy whose son walks out with a billion and a half dollars to manage? That means millions of dollars a year. Whose son asks for $10 million a year for introductory purposes, right? $10 million a year. And he's supposed to be negotiating with China? China would just hope — China would just hope that I don't win, because, hey, we've taken in tens of billions of dollars a year, first time ever with China. We never took in 10 cents. Saved our steel mills, saved our steel and aluminum industries. In 2016, North Carolina voted to fire this corrupt political establishment, and you elected a president who is finally putting America first. And if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because, thankfully, I'm not a politician, never will be. And if I don't always play by the rules of Washington 
and the Washington establishment. It's because I fight for you, and there's never been anybody that's fought harder for you. I had a very nice life before doing this. I had a very nice life. Thank you. Thank you very much. So nice. That's such a great honor. When I hear that, it's never been said at any point. I said, did anybody ever hear that? Ronald Reagan we liked, others we liked. Nobody's ever, nobody's ever heard it, and I appreciate it very much. My opponent is promising a long, dark winter. Did anybody see the debate? I'm sure nobody watched it, right? He didn't do too well. No, he's looking. Remember, he said, you're going to have a long, dark winter. It's so inspiring. How about somebody says, gee, we really like Biden. I don't think anybody likes Biden. <laughs> Harry, let's watch Biden tonight on television. And he says, we want to, we're going to have a long, dark winter. How inspiring that is, right? So he said that, and I'm saying that we're going to deliver the greatest American comeback in history. That's what we're doing. And we're way ahead of schedule. This election is a choice between a Biden depression and a boom like you've never seen before. It's a choice between a Biden lockdown. He wants to lock it down. Let's lock it down. Let's lock it down. And by the way, tell your governor to open up North Carolina. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. They'll probably announce it on November 4th. We're going to open up now. You know, they thought our numbers wouldn't be so good. They thought by keeping these states like Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Michigan. How about her? Her husband roams free. He's the only one in the whole state. No, but they thought that by keeping him down, the numbers would. And yet, we had at 33.1. That's the highest in the history of our country by double. You have to go back to 1952, and that was half of what we did. So we're looking forward. We're going to have very shortly, within a couple of weeks, we're going to have safe vaccine that will end. And now, look, we're rounding. They, they hate when I say it, the fake news, but we're rounding the turn. We're rounding the corner anyway. We're rounding the corner. But on top of that, we have vaccines coming from Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, great companies, and they're right there. They're right there. And we're going to have them launched, and our military is going to do it logistically incredible. And we're going to start with our seniors, especially our seniors where they have some problems with heart, with diabetes, and we're going to have a great thing. It's going to speed up the process. We launched — and by the way, it does work. Here I am, right? Here I am. Now, I like to say that the medicine I took, Regeneron, I'd like to say that it had no impact on me because I'm a perfect physical specimen and I'm very young. But I decided to take it anyway, right? Now, it's amazing the things we've been able to do in the last six months. Not only that, if you look at uh, all of the, the — what we produce now, we've become a production incredible what we're doing and what we're sending to the, the world. The ventilators, what we're sending to the world. I mean, we're sending things that nobody could believe. The treatments that reduce the fatality rate now, 85 percent. Think of it. Think of it. But my wife, our first lady, got it, and our son, Barron, got it, right? And Barron's 14, and he's very tall, and he's strong. And he had it for a matter of minutes. That's why I say, Get the kids back to school. Get them back to school. The doctor came up to us and said, I'm sorry, but Barron has tested positive. And I said, for what? Tested positive for what? And, you know, it's got about 30 different names, but he said, COVID. We could call it the China plague, the China virus, but he didn't say. He said, COVID. I said, gee, that's too bad. He said, oh, he'll be fine. About 14 minutes later, he came back. I said, how's Barron doing? Oh, he shook it off. It's fine. He's fine. They're young. They have strong immune systems. Get them back to school, please. We've learned about this horrible plague 
that was sent to us by China. Our excess mortality rate in America is 40 percent lower than Europe. You know, you keep hearing Europe is doing so well. They're not doing so well. And we want them to do well, by the way. And we help them. We help them. We want them to do well. And uh, — but they're having a very hard time. Joe Biden is promising to delay the vaccine and turn America into a prison state while letting rioters roam free. You know, they close your churches, they close your schools. But if you want to riot and burn down the stores and have the anarchists out there do lots of it, that's okay. You can't stop that. But you can't go to school and you can't go to church. It's crazy. All Democrat run, by the way. All Democrat run. You look at Portland, Democrat, super liberal Democrat. We could fix that situation. We have to be invited in. We fixed Seattle because we said, that's enough. We're going in. We don't care. We're going in. So we were going in the next morning. That night, they found out about it. They said, we're leaving now. Thank you very much. And we did a great job in Minnesota, Minneapolis. After you watch that place burning down, a week and a half later, they went in and solved it in about a half an hour. If we'd listened to Joe Biden on allowing travel to come in from China and Europe, remember, he said, oh, he's xenophobic. Now he runs for president. He said we should have acted sooner. Months later, he didn't think we should do it. Hundreds of thousands more people would have died. We saved 2 million people or more. You remember the model? It said 2.2 million people would die. Well, we saved 2 million people by acting quickly. Now Biden wants a cruel and very heartless nationwide shutdown. It won't affect you because you're already shut down. I don't know what the heck. What's going on with your state? Are you ready to open up? I think so, huh? Now, you know what? People aren't going to take it anymore. Look at the uh, — look at what happened in Europe. And the people are revolting. They, they don't want to do it anymore. They can't do it anymore. We can't have the cure be worse than the problem itself. That was like the first thing I said a long time ago. The Biden lockdown will result in countless deaths and wipe out an entire generation of dreams. And we've learned that children with a computer do not do well compared to being in classes, okay? They don't do well. It's not the same. And the parents have to go to work and the problems that are caused with alcohol, drug abuse, it's — we can't let this happen. And you can't let it go on. I have a feeling that probably he'll say, you know, uh, it's now November 4th, the day after the election. We'll go back. We'll go back. He should have never done that. And they should have never done that. And actually, the states that are doing best — look at Florida. Look at all of these states where they had a spike. And they didn't close down. Look at what happened in Arizona. Look at what happened in Texas. We can't let it happen. Europe imposed draconian lockdowns, and yet their cases are exploding, their deaths are surging, and their economies are — let's face it, you look at what happened. They're in ruins. You know, we had the smallest down and the largest up and the largest fast up on the economy by far. So the European lockdowns are leading to more suffering, delayed medical care, and financial devastation. A vote for Biden is a vote for lockdowns, layoffs, misery, and getting rid of your Second Amendment. You know, they want to — they want to hurt our police, but they want to take away your guns. Very interesting, isn't it? If you want a vaccine to kill the virus, a job to support your family, and freedom to live your life, then go cast your ballot, cast your vote for me. We're going to do it. We're doing it. But you don't have to take my word for it, because in certain states that I like a lot, we spend a lot of money for — where is that? Oh, look at that over there. Look at that. You're going to see something right now. You don't have to listen. Please roll the video. Roll it. My problem is I voted for NAFTA. I'm supporting NAFTA because I think it is a positive thing to do. And I do not pretend to be an expert on uh, international trade matters. Trade agreements like NAFTA and permanent normal trade relations with China, which forced American right. workers to compete against people who are making pennies 
an hour has resulted in the loss of 160,000 jobs. The president is absolutely right when he says that China has been cheating for 25 years and that Bill Clinton didn't, didn't do enough about it, George W. Bush didn't do enough about it, Barack Obama didn't do enough about it. The rising China is an incredibly positive development for not only China, but the United States and the rest of the world. Rising China is a positive, positive development. It is in our self-interest that China continue to prosper. We want to see China rise. China is a great nation, and we should hope for the continued expansion. China is not our enemy. We talk about China as our competitor. We should be helping. The idea that China is going to eat our lunch is bizarre. The idea that they are our competition, they're going to beat us, is bizarre. They're not bad folks, folks. China's not a problem. Allowing China into the World Trade Organization, which he supported, extending most favored nation status to China, which he supported, that those steps allowed China to take advantage of the United States by using our own open trade deals against us. No, Do you think in retrospect that you were naive about China? No. But doesn't he deserve some credit for that? It's better. The USMCA is better than NAFTA. It is better than NAFTA. You know, we have to come together. That's why I'm running. I'm running as a proud Democrat for the Senate. So vote! Vote! Visit iwill.com slash Ohio. God bless you. Uh, can somebody tell Joe, by the way, it's not a real website, and Joe, you're running for president, not senator, and by the way, that senator, the Mormon guy, is Mitt Romney, not some Mormon governor. Now, sadly, what we showed you, that's just from a couple of hours today. Because every ch time that Joe actually leaves the basement bunker and stays out past 10 a.m., well, disaster ensues. Here's a quick reminder. Look, tomorrow's Super Star Tuesday, and I want to thank you all. I tell you what, I'm rushing ahead, aren't I? We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the, you know the thing. If you agree with me. Go to Joe 30330. We choose truth over facts. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone, make sure the kids hear words. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Donald Trump does pose an excellent strength to this. The, it's not hypothetical. This is pretty serious. By the way, these are way beyond an occasional campaign gap, and I am beginning, well, I'm more than a little worried that this man could represent a clear and present danger to this country. He's obviously not capable of leading. He's been hiding the entire campaign, and the corrupt media mob is covering for him. Joe wants to be the president of the United States of America. That would be the toughest job in the world. And at times, Joe doesn't seem to remember that he's even running for president or what state he's in or what day of the week it is. Does anyone really believe that if elected, that Joe Biden will actually be in control of anything? What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. Barack and I think it's a right for people to have bad health care. Folks, we got a lot of work to do. I don't really need you to get me elected. I need you once I'm elected. I'll lead an effective strategy to mobilize true and international effort to pressure. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. That saves a lot of words up here this cold, windy night. It saves a lot of words, but we can't do this to our country. We have such potential. We cannot do this. He's failed for 47 years. And at the debate, all I had to do is very easy. I said, Joe, why didn't you do it? You know, 
as he stood and complained, what about this one? I said, Joe, you left three and a half years ago. You were there for a long time. And you were in that position for eight years. Why didn't you do it, Joe? And he never had an answer. No law enforcement endorsements, no nothing. Joining us tonight are some people that have done a great job and people that really helped me a lot in Washington. A man who right now, I hear you doing extremely well in the polls, Senator Tom Tillis. Tom. Very good. I just saw a very good poll, and we had a very good poll today, too, I have to tell you that. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if I don't win after coming here, they said, maybe we can cancel North Carolina tonight. One of my guys, one of my geniuses said, I think they'd understand. You've only been out here for two days waiting. I said, I don't have the courage to even think about asking that question. No, never, would never even think about it. No, you've been great to me. The, the victories that we've had together and what we've done for you, and we have you protected, including your tobacco growers, right? We have it all. We have you all protected. You're all protected. A really wonderful person, wonderful woman, and she's always with me, Representative Virginia Fox. Virginia, thank you. Thank you, Virginia. Great job you do. A man that I'd love to see in, he'll open you up. I think we can get a guarantee tonight. Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest. Come on, Dan, win. Good, Dan. Boy, oh boy, I tell you, that would be a natural. That's a natural. You'll open it up right away? Okay. You should win just on that one. This is crazy. He's doing, he's doing what the Washington Democrats are telling him to do. Attorney General candidate Jim O'Neill. Hi, Jim. Great job, Jim. GOP Chairman Mike Watley. How are we doing, Mike? Are we winning? Are we leading? The polls up, right? Yeah, we're up pretty good. I we should be up. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Pastor and a friend of mine, and he lives right down the road, Pastor Franklin Graham. Thank you, Mr. President. And I would like to just to take a second to pray for this man. Will you join me? Our Father and our God, we pray for our President, protect him and his family, and protect our nation. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a good genes right there, right? That's good genes. Billy Graham, how good was Billy Graham, right? Nobody liked Billy. After years of rebuilding foreign countries, we are finally rebuilding our country. For 47 years, the Democrats viciously and brutally, repeatedly attacked. And you know what we're talking about? Because it was led by a man named Joe Biden. Black Americans, they attacked, decimated the black middle class and called young black men, super predators. To every black American, I am asking for you to vote. You have to vote on Tuesday. You can send a message on Tuesday to the corrupt Democrat establishment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We've had tremendous support. And by the way, just so you understand, I don't want to look at all those cameras. Oh, they're all blazing. You ready? So we're doing so well. And one of the great things that's happened is our African-American vote, our black community vote, is way up. And they're all saying, wow. Wow. They're all saying, everybody back there is saying, wow. That's amazing. That's what's happening in Florida. That's what's happening here. That's what's happening all over. This is your one and only chance to show Sleepy Joe Biden 
what you think of his decisions to attack, insult, jail you. 1994, Bill, I'm fighting for you. And if you look at what we've done, just quickly, criminal justice reform, prison reform, opportunity zones with Tim Scott, historically black colleges and universities, long-term funding. They had no funding. They had — every year, they had to come back and ask for funding. I said, nope. We got to get you long-term funding. We got them more money than they wanted. They needed it. Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure United States border in the history of our country. Biden would make every city in America a sanctuary city, which is not good. And it's not Biden. It's not Biden. It's his handlers. I believe our country should be a sanctuary for law-abiding American citizens. The Biden-Harris plan would also increase refugees 700 percent, opening floodgates to radical Islamic terrorism. You see what's happening in France. I'm keeping terrorists, jihadists, and violent extremists out of our country. And you know, so I was asked on this very windy night, speaking of that, to do a thing that we used to do during the campaign. I'll do it. Has anyone heard it? The snake. Have you heard it? Should I do it? So this has to do with this subject. And it's been a long time since I've done this one, but so many people are asking, are you ready? The snake, on her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew. Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. Take me in, O oh, tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh, tender woman, sighed that vicious snake. She wrapped him up, all cozy, in a comforter of silk, and she laid him by the fire, said, with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night. As soon as she arrived, she found that pretty snake she'd taken in had been revived. Take me in, O oh, tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh, tender woman, sighed that vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But I hadn't brought you in by now. You know you would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying thank you, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh, tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh, tender woman, sighed that vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman. And you bit me, but why? You knew your bite was poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up, silly woman, said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. So I've been asked by so many people. I've been asked to do that one by so many people. But that pertains a little bit to what we see going on. And you look at uh, Paris, and you look at the attacks over the last week, and you look at what's happening, and we are doing very well. We are doing very well. We have a very strong policy. We put in a ban that a lot of people were upset about, and now they're saying, thank you very much for the ban. We appreciate it very much. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military. We also passed VA Choice and VA Accountability for our great vets. We have a 91 percent approval rating with our vets, the highest by a lot in history. At my direction, the United States military conducted a successful operation to rescue an American hostage last night, kidnapped overseas just 96 hours earlier. Incredible people. The U.S. Special Forces brilliantly executed a daring nighttime operation 
Over the last four years, we have rescued a record 55 hostages and detainees in more than 24 countries, and we pay nothing. Because once you pay, those numbers go very high. But this operation should serve as a stark warning to terrorists and thugs who try to kidnap our people. You cannot escape the long reach of American military and American justice. So this happened last night. We're very proud of them. I was at I was at Fort Bragg. Oh, by the way, we're leaving the name Fort Bragg in case you had any questions. Let that word out if you don't mind. Cancel culture. Let's cancel. Let's change everything. No, we're leaving the name Fort Bragg. A lot of we won two world wars out of Fort Bragg and other great places. Gee, let's change the name of Fort Bragg. We obliterated the ISIS caliphate, and we killed the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. We eliminated the mass murder of U.S. troops. Soleimani is dead. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. I recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. 52 years they negotiated that deal. We did it in less than two hours. And we are now forging peace in the Middle East. So already three countries, and they're lined up. A vote for me in the Republican Party is a vote to save the American dream. And in conclusion, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. We will hire more police, increase penalties on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. With God's help, we will defend the right to life, religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms, your Second Amendment. Which Sleepy Joe will not be doing any of that. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will ensure peace through strength. And we are the envy of the world military. $2.5 trillion, but we have the finest missiles and rockets and tanks and jets. What we've done, submarines, we have the greatest military, and our nuclear arsenal has been updated and is in tippy-top shape. And only hope to God we never have to use it. Yes! Hope to God we never have to use it. We will end surprise medical billing require price transparency starts on January 1st, all done. Lower drug prices even more. Going to bring them down to the lowest anywhere in the world. I've exercised a thing called favored nations. The drug companies do not like me too much. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon, and the United States will be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of North Carolina. Two days from now, America's fate is in your hands. You must get out and vote. This is the most important election possibly in the history of our country. You must let everyone know, go get them, go grab your family, grab your boss, grab your coworkers, grab them all.
Got to get out and vote. So important. From Asheville to Charlotte, from Wilmington to Raleigh, and from Greensboro to right here in Hickory. Great place. Greatest furniture in the world. I've bought plenty of it. And it's much better than what they make in China, that I can tell you. I know it well. That's a big difference. We inherit the legacy of red-blooded American patriots who gave their blood, sweat, and tears to defend our country and to defend our freedom. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes, right? These are great, great heroes who crossed the oceans, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, laid down the railroads, raised up the great skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America into the single greatest nation in the history of the world, and the best is yet to come. Proud citizens like you helped build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. Vote for Tom. Get Tom in there, right? We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of North Carolina, we have made America powerful again, our military. We have made America wealthy again. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, North Carolina. Go out and vote. Thank you.